Welcome back. I wanted to talk to you about two other new ES2018 features. And to show you how they work, we're going to use the example that we had before in the video about promises, where we loop through all these URLs, our Star Wars API URL, we fetched the data, and then we just console logged whatever we received. So that if I copy this and paste it into our console, we get our users. We have Luke Skywalker, C3PO, R2D2, and Darth Vader. And if this doesn't look familiar to you, make sure you check out the promises videos first before tackling this one. Now, the first feature I'm going to talk about that's new in JavaScript is called Finally. And as the name suggests, it allows us to do something finally after a promise has finished. And the way it works is we add it usually at the end. And this finally block will be called regardless of whether dot then works or the promise errors and catches into an error. So no matter what, after everything is done inside of a promise, finally it will be called whether it resolves or rejects and does something that we tell it to. In our case, let's say I can have data here and this data will just console.log to see what we get. And we'll just say extra data. So that when we run this one more time, I'm going to copy. Let's refresh here, copy and paste. I hit enter. We get extra over here, but undefined. And that is because finally doesn't really receive a parameter. So this is usually empty, doesn't receive anything from the promise. So we can just leave this out. But you see here that I was able to call extra even though the dot then finished. But what happens if we throw an error and the catch block gets called? We can simulate that fairly easily. We can just do inside of dot then in JavaScript, I can throw an error by saying throw error. And what's going to happen here is as soon as this line reaches, it's going to throw an error, skip over all these console logs, and hit the catch block with this error parameter. So if I save this, or let's copy this, I'm going to refresh the page, copy and paste, and let's see what happens down here. I'm going to hit enter, and we see that Oh, we get the error. The catch block has run with our error, but we also have the extra being called, which is finally. So finally is great for those times that you need to run a piece of code no matter what after a promise. Perhaps you want to send an email to a user regardless of whether their request was successful or failed. Maybe you want to have a little notification icon. There are many ways to use finally, and now there's a way to make sure that something happens after a promise, whatever we tell it to. Now, the next one I want to talk about is a little bit more advanced. And in order to explain it, let's clean this up and talk about the for await of feature. Now, if you remember, we had this piece of code in our async await video. And there I showed you how we're able to use the async await feature of ES8 to make our promises more synchronous looking. Instead of having those promise chains of dot then, dot then, dot then, dot catch, we can use async await. Now, the cool thing about this new feature is that it allows us to loop through our async await calls if we have multiple of them, just like we are able to using the for of 
So using the for of loop that allowed us to iterate over iterables, we're now able to iterate over the await promises that we're going to have. But instead of talking, let me show you in code. Now, let's say we'll use this as an example. We're going to create a new function. And this is going to be called get data to. Actually, let's remember what the for of loop looks like. If I had a function, let's call it loop through URLs that receives the URL parameter. And it will loop using the for of loop. We'll say URL of URLs. And the URLs is this array over here with three URLs. And this for of loop is simply going to loop through everything. And we can just log out the URL. If I copy and paste this, let's refresh here, hit enter, and just do loop through URLs now, and pass in the URLs parameter. I see that I'm just looping through these. So that's what for of was. So using that knowledge, we can now create a new function called get data to. And this new function will do exactly what this one does above, but using the for await of feature. Let's see how that would look. We will have an async function so that we can use the await keyword. And in here, we can have an array of promises. Because an array of promises is iterable and able to be looped by the for await of keywords. So these arrays of promises will simply be our URLs.map that will loop. And let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see. That's better. We're going to loop over the URL. And it's going to return the fetch URL. So in here in the first line, all we're doing is creating an array of these fetch promises of each one of these requests. Next, we can use the for await of to loop through these promises. So all we would say is say for await. And in here, we'll say let request of array of promises, which is an iterable, is going to loop through each of these promises, each of the requests. And we're going to extract that data from each of the requests by saying await request.json. Because remember, we use the await keyword in front of a promise. And as we know, we're using the await keyword here because we're looping over promises. And we need to await request.json, which again is a promise that receives our data. Remember, similar to how we did here before. And then we simply console.log, let's say data, to see what we get. If I clear this, and let's just copy our new code. Make this a little bit bigger oh, and make sure I don't have the semicolon, then I have it here. So let's copy the URLs. Let's refresh the page, copy the URLs, and then we'll also copy the function, paste it in here, hit enter, and let's just clear this. And if I do get data to now, and I run this, we see that, look at that, we've received first the users, which are right here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see. We have the users. And the next up, we have, what do we have next? We have the posts. So 100 posts. And then the next up is the albums. Just like that.
And this is the new ES2018 feature. As you see here, it's the exact same thing as we did above. If I run our original function, get data, we see that we get the exact same results. We have albums, we have posts, we have users. The only thing that the for await of feature does, it allows us to loop through these multiple promises almost as if we're writing synchronous code, right? So to review, we have the finally function that we can run at the end of a promise. And we have the for await of that takes each item from an array of promises that returns to us in the correct order, all the responses. All right, I think that's enough. It's time for you to play around with this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.